Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. As you can see, I've got a bunch of rocks out in front of me today. I am sorting through, organizing parts of my rock collection. I am missing some things per the robbery. So um, that's still kind of an open sore, but as you can see, I've, I've been able to restore some of it and get back to some places. So we're rebu rebuilding around here. But yeah, so frequently, I go through things, um, the new things that I've added to the collection, and I do organizing. I really like to keep things organized as best as I can. And I've told you guys before, a nice way to organize specimens is actually in tackle boxes, just like fishing tackle boxes like you see here. They're very nice, they're fairly cheap, and a really good way to keep things organized. Make sure you put labels in there. Um, but I have another tip for you today. Actually, let's also say wear gloves is a good tip. When you're handling specimens in your rock collection or you're out collecting, wear gloves. And I will admit I'm a bit of a hypocrite when it comes to this tip. I don't always wear gloves when I should. Um, silly me. So, you know, feel free to make fun of me and point that out in the comments when you see that, that I'm not wearing gloves. Maybe that will bully me into doing it more often, but it is important. Do wear gloves. It's just, trust me, it is important when handling uh, your rock specimens. And today's actual tip, though, is still along those lines of safety and handling. And this is going to be more about, do you really know what's in your rock collection? Maybe you've bought some samples or maybe you go out and you pick up a random thing that is maybe in an old mining tailing pile or, or something from a river or something that's washed down from somewhere, something in a wash. You pick up a sample and you go, that's cool, I like that. Maybe I just like the way it looks. And you add it to your rock collection. But do you really know what it is? Do you really know what its contents are and whether or not it's bad for you. Can it be harmful? And before you say something like, oh yeah, I know exactly what's in my rock collection. Be careful here because if you're like a typical rock hound, we tend to pick up lots of things and you do not always know what they are. Even people that are very good at identifying minerals, uh, mineralogy is crazy. And uh, when you're actually just picking up specimens out in the natural environment, um, they're mixed. So we don't always actually know what we have. Um, even if you're buying stuff, uh, it, it's it's tough to be, you know, to know for sure what you have. And a recent viewer just commented on my radioactive dino bone tour asking, yikes, do they even test what they sell at the gem and mineral shows before selling it? And the answer is, well, Possibly not. There's really no guarantee on that. There's often even uh, no guarantee that a certain specimen is actually what it's labeled as at a, a show or a shop display. And yeah, I've found some errors out there. But yes, there are certainly radioactive samples that get into various collections and booths at rock and gem shows. Um, whether small or large events. Uh, in fact, I even know someone who collects radioactive specimens, and this is how he gathers interesting samples, by going through displays and hitting them with a Geiger counter or a scintillator to, to find them and, and add to his collection. Uh, you could honestly take a small Geiger or scintillator and just scan samples in displays, and you might very well find some, especially then if you have ideas of what to target, like fossil, wood, and bones, or certain mineral types. So it's a good thing, again, to be cautious with handling and storage, and this is where our tip comes in today, because one thing that can happen in your collection is you can end up with radioactive material and maybe not even know it. Maybe some of you have been there before. Um, but it, if you're thinking, no, no, I don't collect radioactive stuff, just be careful because it can happen and you don't even know it unless you really have identified them as radioactive. And there's really only certain ways to be sure. So I've, I've even not long ago checked a friend's collection and they didn't think they had anything and they actually did have one thing that was a little radioactive. So you want to check your collection for radioactivity. That's essentially the tip 
but let me demonstrate some things today here. So I have some of these items out here. You can see some of them. And the question is, is in this collection, is there anything radioactive here? What do you think? If we look around in this collection, you look around at my different specimens here, if you had to take a guess, is there anything radioactive? So one thing we know is that there's these radioactive minerals, beautiful, awesome radioactive minerals out there. So you might be able to identify a specific mineral if you know radioactive minerals. Uh, and that can make it a little easier, but still. Uh, so, you know, let's say we have something like carnitite, altonite, torbernite, these beautiful, beautiful green torbernite. Uh, we would recognize that. But then there are other rock materials that can house radioactive elements without being so obvious as a pure mineral specimen. So if you probably, if you didn't buy it and, and guarantee that that beautiful mineral specimen was this great uh, green torbernite example, then some of your samples might actually have radioactivity. And the other thing that gets a little weird are fossils, because as opposed to say those minerals, like if you knew you had a sample of that mineral, you could expect radioactivity confidently, but when it comes to fossils, it gets a little weird because fo some fossils can be radioactive. They might commonly be radioactive, but they're not always radioactive. And that's why they get a little weird. It, it really depends on circumstances of the lifetime of that fossil, what has happened. Um, so it can be literally the same type of fossil as another one, and one can be radioactive and the other isn't. Um, so. I demonstrated some of this on an adventure we just went on in Jurassic Morrison material, and that stuff is known for having radioactive fossils. And so, yeah, I took you in the field and showed you that, and uh, I then I demonstrated how to determine what was making, what was the cause of radioactivity in the fossils. So, if you haven't seen those, I'll stick the links for those in the description. But for today, let's look at this collection and let's demonstrate. Let's see if we have anything radioactive. And like I said, there's only so many ways to analyze this and determine if you have radioactivity. You might hear about UV, using a UV light, um, and looking for fluorescence. And this is a cool thing, very fun to use a UV light. I have one um, and talk about fluorescence here. And they're, they're super cool and some things fluoresce these bright green colors and a lot of those are associated with like uranium with radioactivity. Um, but it's not a foolproof way because there are minerals that can be, that can fluoresce, that aren't necessarily radioactive. So uh, it's not the only way. The only real foolproof way is actually to use something like a Geiger counter or a scintillator that's going to tell you what you have going on. And so this is one that I have been talking up around here. It's the Radiocode scintillator, a fairly affordable scintillator. And I know. I really like this thing. So let's use this today. I'm going to just turn it on. And we're going to go ahead and scan my collection and see what we have going on here. Uh, but first, I will take a background reading just for knowledge. And then we will just see what the device does. OK, so we're basically sitting around 0 0.08 millisieverts. We're going to look at the millisieverts. We can look at counts, but uh, we look at this today, we're talking about dose rate, we're talking about your exposure to this stuff. Um, and we'll talk more in other discussions about differences in measurements and stuff like that, but let's save that for another day today. Let's just see what this thing does on various specimens in my collection and see if we've got anything going. So basically, yeah, I'm just going to test this one. Doesn't look to be really responding to that. How about this one? No heightened response there. Uh, we can try this one. Not anything too crazy going on there. So yeah, this is what you'd basically have to do, is go through your collection and see if you have a heightened response from your scintillator to see if you've got anything going on. So what haven't we done yet? We could do, we can do pretty much everything. 
Now normally you would sit this thing on samples for a while, but I'm just looking for anything really, this, this thing's fairly sensitive, so it would respond. There's nothing that is really heightened right now above background, so I'm not too worried at this point. I've had it. It's, it's fairly instant. Um, the response rate, it's, it's pretty quick. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything yet. What about this dark piece over here? Anything going on there? Let's see what we got. Well, again, just kind of still within range. So, how about this guy here? Oh. Huh. Let's see if I can... Hmm. Okay, that's actually going up on that one. Here's our counts. Just if you want to see, you can switch back and forth. And back to the millisieverts measurement. Okay, so I found something in my collection that warrants safe handling then. Thanks to our uh, Geiger counter. Let's set it over here for now. And uh, yeah, so... I did a lot of things in the collection. Um, realistically, you would do everything and you would check them one by one. And yeah, and then when you find something like this, again, handle it well. That dust that it has, is dropping, you want to be careful with that and, and wear a mask and clean that up. Don't, don't inhale the dust. Um, it's a small piece. I imagine if we had a lot more of this sample, we'd actually get even uh, more response from this. So it's got something going on there. Um, I'm pretty sure there's uranium in that sample. It is a fossil specimen. So I would store this a little differently than the rest of my items. Now, you might notice that it wasn't crazy hot, like some, like a pure piece of, say, like a torbernite, or if we had, like, <laughs> if you have pure, if you have uranium ore or something like that, you'd get really get a heightened response. This stuff is not quite as hot. But that's basically what you want to do with your rock and fossil collection for safe for safe handling. All right, so there you have it, folks. Make sure you test your rock collection for unsuspecting radioactive material that you might have collected, and what a cool thing to find. And like I've mentioned here, um, if you if you do find it, it, it's a cool thing to have in your collection, but it just, the implications are that at that point, then you know it's important to handle those samples properly to, um, to wear gloves and to store them properly and keep them in their own section. Um, we'll talk more about that, but those are the implications here. You don't have to really panic. Just, uh, you know, take those things out from under your pillow if that's where you keep them. Keep them in a, in a container. Um, it, depending on the type of radiation you're dealing with, you keep them in certain types of containment uh, areas and handle them properly. And the main thing is, is be careful. Don't let them break apart. Don't cut them without wearing a mask. You might not want to cut them at all, but, but be careful with the dust because inhalation is going to be your main problem with these. And that's pretty much it. You've checked it now, you know what you're dealing with, and now you're doing some good safe handling. I hope that tip is useful. I'll have a lot more tips here for your, your rock hounding adventures here at Let's Go Geo. And lots of stuff to learn here, so I hope you'll join me on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. Bye, guys.